Hey everyone, so D5 Render 2.0 has been out for a few months now, and in just the past couple of weeks, I have gotten to see the updates. And if I had to resume my opinion, I would just say this, I can't believe this program is still for free. All right, so I had already made a video on how to use D5 Render and its basic tools, so you may wanna check that out up here. In this video, I wanna take a look at the new features in this version, and also while I tell them to you, I want to show you how I use them in this project. It is a greenhouse downloaded from the 3D warehouse and I added a few modifications and of course uh, used D5 to render it. And well, these were the results that I got from a few hours with the model and let me show you how I did it. Okay, so this is the model that I had in SketchUp. As I told you guys, I downloaded the, the greenhouse from the 3D warehouse and the rest of the context I also downloaded from the 3D warehouse. If you have the D5 converter, or you can just press play and it will open the D5 uh, program interface and it will automatic automatically import your file inside. Or if not, you can download it for free in the D5 page. If you have it for Revit or for any other program, they have a D D5 converter for your program as well. As soon as you click on play, it really depends on how heavy your model is and how long it will take. It didn't take that much for me. And this is what it looks like as soon as I opened the program. As you guys can see, there's nothing inside of the model, just what I had 3D modeled. If I want to modify anything, if I want to erase anything, what I have to do is just go back to my SketchUp model, erase, do the modifications. For example, here I am erasing some lights. And when I go back into my 3D uh, 3D space in the D5 render, if the lights still appear, then you can just go back and synchronize by using the synchronize button and it will just synchronize everything there with you. So this is a new interface that D5 render has. We have the scenes layer on the left part of our screen. And, we, and if we just click on it, we can just see some scenes that we can create. So I'm here, I'm creating a new scene, for example, a front facade scene. And on the right side, we see all of our geo and sky, HDRI, effects panel, effects tab, and uh, many of the things that we're gonna use in the whole model. And one of the first new features that I really liked was the 3D grass material, which is very easy to change. So we just select the material that we wanna change and in the drop down menu, we have different options if we wanna change our our, our material too. And we have one that says grass specifically. So if, if I click on grass, this is how easy it is. If you already have a grass texture to have a 3D grass, you can change the height of the grass or the grass length. You can also change the roughness, the specular map, the normal map, and some other different things. And of course the rotation. One of the cool features that we all wanted from D5, maybe we would need a little bit more personalization, but this is really, really good. And now in our assets tab, what we have is different sets of assets. We have a ton of new assets uh, inside of the animal tab, the building tabs, the architectural context tab. So here, what I'm going to do is import these context buildings into my file as you guys can see we have different kinds of uses and different kinds of scaled buildings that we can use in our model so we have a residential building a modern industrial building as well as soon as you import you download and import these buildings you can rotate them you can scale them up scale them up or down or you can change some of their properties so here i'm importing different kinds of buildings and as, and as you guys can see i had to go back into SketchUp to erase some of the models that I had, but I'm just importing these different kinds of buildings because I think they are first in very, very good quality and they just give a very urban sense to the image that I want. Second, they provide some shadow and good reflections because you know the greenhouse is all in, gra in glass and we need those kind of subtle reflections to be present so, so we don't see like a, the general sky in its context. Now I'm also starting to import uh, different elements for the landscape. So I imported some benches that I can use in the front part of my image. And I also imported a basketball court. I didn't have this in mind, but I thought it was super interesting. And it just gave it a much more urban look, you know, those kind of imperfect uh, scenarios that we always want. We, I added some of these um, metal copper lights, which just give it a little bit 
of framing and composition into the image. So as you guys can see, there is a whole ton of very interesting assets in the D5 render library. And I think with each version, they're going to update much more and more. But the good thing about these assets is that their materials are very well applied and they have very good texturing. So it just gives, an, gives us a more realistic feel when we are going to render this in the at the end. Now with this new update, one of the cool features that we have is that is the search bar in the assets tab. So if you want to search maybe a vehicle, maybe a bus, maybe a different, a special kind of tree, you just type it in in the search bar and D5 will look it up for you. And as soon as you have different sets of like favorite things that you always use, maybe in all your models, you always use this kind of tree or that kind of tree, you can set it as a favorite and you will have a special favorites tab for you to visit and come back to later. In this version, we also have the path tool for vegetation. So you can set a specific path and you can add a, as much vegetation as you want. I think in the free version, it's around three, three elements per path. But in the pro version, you can add as much vegetation as you want. And you just start adding that into your path and you can modify it later. Here, I'm creating a path for inside of the greenhouse for all of the elements that I'm going to have inside of the greenhouse. And then I'm going to move it up, move it down a little bit, scale it up, scale it down, uh, change the properties a little bit. And I can also copy this path very easily so I don't have to create it all over again. Now, as you guys can see here, I'm creating a new path with different kinds of vegetation. And I'm using it for the outside of the greenhouse. I'm also using a different path for the foreground of the image so we can see different kinds of vegetation. We give it a little bit of variety to our image and we don't only see this kind of grass. So I'm adding some tall grass, some very different kinds of shrubs, just to make the, the image look a little, bit, a little bit more interesting. Now, another classic way of uh, placing your vegetation is just clicking on the vegetation that you want. In this case, I am selecting some shrubs and you just start placing them in the best parts that, you're in, that suits for your image. You can also notice that each time I place a shrub inside of my image, it just makes a different variation. So it just doesn't look like the same exact copy that I'm just placing around all around the image. And of course, with the geo and sky option, you have the option to change the, the sun rotation, the sun height. You can even place your own HDRI. But here I'm just trying to sense what the feeling of the image is going to be, which is going to be the best place or the best time for me for my image. And of course, one of the new features is the cloud feature where you can change the speed the amount of the clouds and the direction of the clouds, which is this is pretty cool. If you are going to do an animation, you can make the clouds go faster, slower or whatever you want. I'm also adding a little bit of fog just so it looks a little bit more interesting. And of course, I'm testing to see if the volume light would suit the image best. For now, I think it's a little bit strong because it depends on the, the strength of the fog. So I'm going to leave it off, but I think it's a very interesting feature that could uh, be improved a little bit in the in the future. Now I'm going to start modifying some materials because I think the material library in D5 is very interesting and it has very high quality materials which are, are worth putting in your model. So here I'm just changing the exterior uh, a floor of the pedestrian uh, path of, of, my, um, of my model. And I'm also changing the facade material. So I'm making the concrete look a little bit more uh, textury, if that is a word. I'm also changing the glass, the glass uh, part. And I'm just making everything look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more rough, a little bit more greenhouse industrial field like tone. Of course, the frames of the windows, I want them to be in a darker frame. So I'm going to change them to a greenish to green, dark greenish color. And I'm trying to see if the glass, I can change the color as well to a greenish kind of tint glass, which could give me a, you know, like a Art Nouveau kind of vibe. And now that I have the the lower vegetation set, you know, the whole grass, the whole gra uh, shrubs kind of a, a feel. Now I want to import the important trees, the big trees that are going to give that uh, very urbanistic kind of park vibe into my image. Now I'm going to import uh, some general kind of big, big scale trees in the background, but they're not necessarily tropical trees, but I'm gonna leave this tropical foreground um, just for kind of palm trees, which I think would look very interesting and would frame our greenhouse in a very interesting way as well. 
Now, depending on the angle of the sun and where you want the sun to be coming in from, you also have to take care of your reflection. So I'm just seeing that I have a bare reflections on one side of my building. So I added a another context building, which would make the reflections uh, be of other buildings and not of just, you know, the whole um, empty three dimensional space. Now here I'm making some small modifications to the materials. And then here I'm starting to see that when, it, when I export the image, what effects I could start applying to my image, which would make it look interesting. And of course, one of the most important effects that you could start adding to your image is the, the 3D LUT space, which you can, you can download a 3D LUT um, online for free, or a D5 render also has some predetermined LUTs, which you can play around with, but you can also play around with the exposure, the highlights, and of course, in the end, if you want, you can also play around with the camera raw filter outside of D5 render inside of Photoshop, which would make it uh, look interesting as well. Now here I'm going for a, a four o'clock kind of vibe, but with not that much yellow tint to it. So I want to have like a more purplish tint to the shadows. And I'm just trying to modify that. And I'm exporting some text test renders to see if they look interesting. And one of the most interesting things in this new version of D5 render is that we can see this live statistics of our model. So if we go to file and view statistics, we can see how much GPU, how much uh, frames per second our model is actually taking. So if we have a very heavy model, we can see that uh, maybe our computer is lagging a little bit and we, we would need to turn some groups off. But this is one of the most interesting maybe features of this new version where we can actually see how our computer is performing with the model that we are working at at the moment. And of course, as you guys can see that as I start to add more vegetation, much more details, well, my computer starts to get a little bit slower, not the, nothing too dramatical, but still it, it is something that we can control. Of course, if you are creating different groups of, of elements, like for example, the groups of trees, groups of people, groups of characters, then you can also uh, turn them off while you're working so that you can make the computer much faster and work much faster when you are in D5. And now here in our assets library, we have a new set of characters as well. The there's in here, I'm creating a character path, which is maybe that's something that you guys have seen before. But here in this path, what is very interesting is that it's very easy to make. I'm just clicking on different kinds of points around my whole model. Then I can import from three, four, five sets of different characters. And I just want to make sure that they're varied, but they're still kind of like in the same climate area with their clothing and with the context that they're in. And of course, with this character path, I can adjust the density, the width of the path, the direction, and I can place them on the ground if I am in a different, um, if I have a different topography. But since this is a flat topography, I would have uh, no problem with it. Also, another feature that comes with this new version of D5 is the wind feature where you can control the strength of the wind and you can actually import some kinds of trees and elements and assets into your model which react to this wind. So for example, here I'm selecting some trees and you can see which trees can react to the wind because they have a small icon on the top left corner. And if you just start importing them and start increasing the wind values, you can see how their leaves and the branch starts to move all around, which is super interesting. I would love maybe in the future versions for this wind feature for it to be able to be applied uh, on many, maybe all kinds of different trees. And of course the grass as well would be really cool. But for now, uh, it's really interesting the feature because we can con control the, the strength of the wind and also the direction of the wind. So as you guys can see, if I have the strength in in the in a number one value, the trees are moving a ton. And of course, if I want to make the effect even much more interesting, I can add, I can go to my particles tab, add some uh, leaves falling. So I can just add them right from above and I can have maybe a fall kind of scene and like a very uh, windy, windy kind of day scene in a very easy way. And it doesn't take much of my computer uh, graphics. So this is a very cool new feature that D5 has. Maybe one of the features that I like the most was the new animal, uh, the, the new animals that D5 had in their asset library, just because they're so realistic, they're so well mapped out that if you want to put an animal very close to the camera on the foreground of your image, 
you wouldn't have any problem because this would not look like a very 3D-ish kind of animal because it has a very nice mapping. And if you get closer to the animal, closer in detail, you can even see the teeth. For example, here I have a German Shepherd and you can see the teeth and all the detail inside of this animal. We also have different things like butterflies, cats, um, uh, different kinds of pigeons or swarms of birds which are very interesting. So I think this feature is really neat, really cool. And we want to see, of course, always more and more, more and more animals in our, in our asset library, just so we can use them in different kinds of scenarios. Now I'm not going to use this in my actual final image, but you can also see that in our power particles tab, we have different kinds of, uh, of particles like the, the fire particle, which looks very interesting, the smoke particle, maybe some water dripping that you can get you can get it closer to, for example, a window, get some uh, different shots of it and you can export it as a video, as you guys can see here, which I tested out really quickly. And you can uh, make it seem as if it as if it was raining and it was just touching on the glass rain was was falling through the glass. And this is one of the new features of D5 2.0. Now, of course, one of the coolest things that we saw in the promotional video of D5 were all the lights, how interesting the lights inside of D5 were getting. So I wanted to try that out as well. And maybe a more in a more nocturnal kind of image. So I started adding different lights. I you, you guys can see that in the top bar of our D5 interface, we have an option to add path, to add vegetation, to add different particles. But in the first one, we can see the option to add different kinds of light. So we can add a point light, we can add strip light, a rectangular light or a circular or a uh, uh, a focal light. And it was very easy. I just clicked on different kinds of lights. And as you guys can see, in a very quick manner, you can change the the temperature of each light. So for example, for the exterior, I wanted warm lights. And for the interior, I wanted very cold lights, which is very typical of the buildings that you see today. And of course, if I wanted to add a huge Omni light, I would just uh, add it so I can see a little bit more of the details on the trees, on the palm trees, and we can have a nice contrast um, uh, with the lights of the interior versus lights of the exterior. Of course, as soon as you start adding lights, you want to play with the exposure and the intensity of the light of the sunlight in your um, environment tab, just so it looks just so everything looks balanced and nothing looks uh, very underexposed or overexposed. Now, as you guys can see, since I'm having different kinds of scenes, like a nocturnal scene, a daylight scene, a sunset scene, what you want to do is save these scenes in your scene list, update them so you don't have to change the the environment tab each time you want to get a different kind of image, but you just click on each different scene and you can transport back into the scene that you're working on. Now, I had set up another scene which I thought was very interesting and I was excited about creating it because it was more of a road scene where you can see a little kid, which is obviously downloaded from the asset library inside of D5 Render. And I also added a crane from SketchUp and I added some different kind of lighting so it just it would just look a little bit more interesting. And I started loving this scene so much just because it looked very different from the typical architectural render. And since I wanted my reflections to be a little bit more realistic, I also added some trees in the background just so the reflection of the greenhouse would would be visible with some trees and not just the, the bare empty empty space. I, mo I modified the light a little bit. I added a light to the crane as well, just so it could look a little bit more realistic. And I rendered this. Uh, the cool thing about um, D5 renders is, is that you can render up to 16K. So, so this is a very nice feature because we can print out our images, include them in our presentation boards, or just render them out with so much finite detail, with, with so much um, with so much detail that if someone wants to zoom in to see how the how the roof of the greenhouse is, they can zoom in and it's not going to be pixelated at all. So this is one of the most interesting features I think that we have inside of D5, the high resolution that we can um, export all of our images in. And finally, I wanted to test out a quick interior scene with my greenhouse project as well, just so you guys can see uh, all the interior assets, the interior uh, elements, like the, the, the furniture, like 
the accessories that we have in the render assets library, which is very interesting. So here I just started adding different kinds of things, like for example, plants in their pots. I also added uh, some kinds of books, uh, different kinds of jars because it was supposed to be kind of like, like a restaurant. And I just did this in a very, very easy and fast way. I mean, with all the lights, all of the assets that I had in the exterior part of my, part of my model, uh, my computer still worked very good. It wasn't lagging that much. It wasn't requiring so much of my graphics card. So I, I was very happy about that as well. So as you guys can see, I'm starting to add different kinds of assets, like very interesting assets that the more uh, details that you can add to an image, the more interesting it can look. And of course, this is how it looked like at the end. Okay, now let's take a look at the images, the final images that we had. So the, this was the first image, which was our exterior image. The resolution is still pretty good. You guys can see that this glass material rendered out pretty, pretty, pretty nice. And if we zoom in, of course, into our, our German Shepherd, he is seen in a very good resolution as well. We have some pigeons flying up over here. Uh, this one i think is going to crash into the glass of the restaurant so that's going to be a pretty sad scene but we can see the background context as you guys can see the volumetric light that we could that we added the fog that we added inside of d5 render also helped a lot to separate our main building from our background building as you guys can see this these context buildings have a lot of detail into them they're just they're not just like blank boxes i really like the addition of this basketball court which just makes it have a very nice urbanistic vibe you guys can see like all these assets like this speed bump over here um this trash can all this was added inside of d5 render and of course this pigeon and this bench which is which has a really nice material um, mapping is, is added there as well. This one, if I'm not, I'm not wrong, is in 8K resolution, which is pretty good as well. I think the rendering times were about 20 to 15 minutes. They weren't that long. Of course, I didn't have any other program open, so you have to take that into account. I did a little bit of color correcting inside of Photoshop as well. I also added these ponds inside of Photoshop. And if we go inside if we zoom in a little bit more we can see the detail inside of our greenhouse where you can see all of our different uh plants maybe i would have added a little bit more variety but if we zoom in all the way to the all the way, all the way over here we can see even the chairs and the tables so this is pretty pretty good if we zoom in on this part of the image we can see that the tree resolution that all these trees are from the asset library inside of d5 all of these trees look pretty good and this was the image i mean i think i like this image a lot maybe it got a little bit too dark i got a little bit crazy with the color correcting maybe i can improve that in the future that's kind of my fault now we are going to one of the images that i liked the most i didn't have a lot of faith in it but i really liked the overall result which was this exterior image where this guy is standing out sits in the morning just taking a look at this nice urban landscape where we can see our greenhouse we can see some palm trees we can see this uh, construction crane which shows obviously that the urban environment in which we're in is always in constant transformation now if we zoom into the back over here we can see one of the trucks from the d5 render asset li library which looks pretty nice these um these garbage bags were added from the sketchup warehouse as you guys can see but they look nice as well i added some boxes over here from the 3d warehouse from the 3d warehouse as well and one of these cans just to make it look a little bit more dirty obviously i didn't like the mapping of the asphalt as much i think i could have improved it a little bit but overall it was good and as you guys can see if we zoom in over here we can see our little german shepherd friend um and we can see the reflection on our facade and of course the glare of the sun but this image i think looked pretty pretty nice it had an interesting vibe to it a nice vibe to it all right so these were the images i created with d5 render some of them were tweaked just a bit in photoshop but 80 to 90 percent of it was done in d5 render overall i think d5 is headed in a great direction and is having a great advances with each update of course there are some things that are missing still but what amazes me is that we are available to have the software for free, meaning students can use it and a lot of freelance creators can use it. Of course, once you get to play around with some of the pro assets in that gigantic library, you might want to change to the pro plan, but it's definitely worth it. So if you want to see more videos on D5, 
please let me know. I consider myself the very average architect when it comes to technical know-how in render engines, but working with D5 was pretty easy and intuitive, so there's nothing to be afraid of. And I would love to know, are you guys using D5 Render? What are your thoughts? Do you like it? I would love to continue this conversation in the comment section of this video. And thank you for watching. And as always, remember to save your files and show it better. All right, whatever. Bye.